When I was a kid, that's the only transportation I had to Coney Island, either by the trolley or, or the train. And we got a, a dollar a day, seven days a week, you know, from 11 to 11. So I used to put up the crazy cats, you know. If the guy would knock them down, I'd set them up. There was a weight on the bottom, and then it went stuffed cloth cats and if you hit it here the thing would bend over but where you had to hit it was right here where the weight was and you could knock it off the guy yelled gimmick so then i would take the cat and put it halfway off off the edge of the uh, our table and all the guy had got to hit it he would get a teddy bear about this big with electric eyes you know and a little switch here you know yeah, I was uh, putting up a crazy cat, and I was coming up this way, and there was a soldier. And I was coming up, and uh, it didn't really hit me hard. If it did, it really knocked me out. But the ball sort of glanced off the size of my head, and I fell down. And I got up, and that meant nothing. He gave me a teddy bear to walk around a little, and uh, then I got back to work again. So. So it was several weeks and then my mother said, you better get this thing up or I got hit it on the head. That was the end of it. Fabulous. Yes, uh, used to come right down <clears throat> to uh, Safe Avenue. The America Round was there on, on the left side, right on 8th Street. If you, got, if you got on 8th Street and you went one block this way, there was the bar where they had all the hot dogs. And my mother would be having a beer and a hot dog while I'm on the, uh, on the America Round. As you come around, there was a, a boom that would come out this way so you could reach it. And then you get the rings. And uh, you put them on, the fi on your finger, see? And if you got the, s the brass ring, you would get another free ride, you know. A couple of times I got the brass ring. But they had restaurants upstairs until I came out to an opening. And then you keep on going, and they have beer gardens on, on each side, where they, they have a German with the kind of leather pants, you know, leather hosen, and doing the German dances. That was the entertainment while you ate lobster dinner now, 350. <laughs> $3.50 $3 for a lobster dinner at Feltness. Nathan's came into existence in about 1916. And uh, this guy that I worked for, he says, his uncle was Nathan, his uncle. So he used to work for him. So every, every weekend after he got all his money, he would put it in a big paper bag. And he, he said to the kid, here, you carry this, but follow me. He's putting the money in the bank. He was wise enough that he didn't have any money on him. If he, got, if he, if he ever got held up, the kid had the money, see? And he used to take him to this bank and then deposit it. Every week, uh, every Monday, uh, that was his job. At the entrance to the bar, there was a uh, baseball, you had a baseball and it had a background canvas with a, with a painting of a, of a uh, sunflower on it. And I had this colored guy stick his head out, see? And if you hit him in the head, but you never hit him in the head because he would duck where he could see the ball coming, he'd come and he could hit him on the shoulder. But as long as your ball went into that hole, uh, you got a cigar, see. <laughs> my 
Well, at that point, it would be the entrance to uh, Steeplechase. See, they had a theatre over here, and uh, you used to sit in the theatre and watch these women coming in. They had skirts at that time down to the ankles, you know. And uh, a guy would have a, a two, a, two boards like this, see, that would go like that, and hit them on the ass, you know. And uh, <coughs> you would hear that noise, and as they coming through, and then he would lead them over to a place where there was a hole in the floor with a blast of hot air. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> some of them didn't even have their pants on in the summer. <laughs> and the damn dresses would go <laughs> up to the <laughs> Then I had a, a, a slide, a slide there, that the, you, you go up on steps, but the steps would do this. You had to watch yourself coming up. It must have been at least 100 feet high. And uh, then you sit on and coming down this slide all the way down this way into like a bowl. You see, there'd be several people in the bowl at that time. The guy would throw a rope down there and then pull you out of it. So there was another ride that was like a big bowl. And it would come up to like a little mountain in the center. And then the guy in the center wouldn't be no centrifugal force because he would stay there all the time. But the guys on the outside, they, they tried to stay there, but then finally the thing is spinning so fast, they come down and then they lay it up against this wall on the side, spinning around. And then I slow it down. And, they were pretty dizzy by that time, see. When I was a real kid, they believed that salt water was a cure. They rented uh, hotels that were back one street back where they would stay over the weekend and get down and bathe uh, just in the water to suppose to cure all, everything, you know. People never had enough of money to buy a bathing suit, they usually rent them. But the boys, we used to just come down and go in the water with their underwear because we had no suits. This is all before, before the boardwalk. Boardwalk lost everything, everything up, you know, too commercial. The people were a little different, it was more family-like, you know, like you're going to see a relative, you know, they were more friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, today it's uh, too commercial, you know, it's just another place, uh, you know, a lot of roughnecks and that, they all had more respect in those days, you know. On the Bowery there was two places where they called them the Tunnels of Love. And one of the pictures, you see them coming out of the tunnel, you know, tunnels of love. And that's the only time you got a kiss, that you could kiss your girl. I was in dreamland with my father. That burnt down in 1911. And uh, they had the uh, freak show there. Uh, with the, at that time, there was a little midget, not, not like a dwarf, but a little midget about so high in perfect proportions. He was from Italy, you know. A little suit, a little man. So that Tom Thun, they call him, Tom Thun. 